I'm like two shades darker than part one, even though I filmed it on the same day. Oh my gosh, I got so tan. I had to run a bunch of errands, which required me to walk around everywhere under the sun. And I don't remember the last time I was this tan. Okay, anyway, hi hey guys, welcome back to part two of Repotting Nick's Giant Plants. <laughs> um, if you have not watched part one, I will link it in the description. Everything is explained there. I'm not gonna talk about it again. Um, I'm just picking up where I left off. So the plants that, or I'm gonna be repotting two, two plants in this video. Um, one of them is over there. First on the roster is this um, Epipremnum aureum mandula, AKA the mandula pothos. And I'm gonna try, <laughs> See you later, bye. Um, here is the top, it is humongous. Huge, guys, look at these leaves. Can you even hear me up there? Um, <laughs> it's so thick. Um, look at like how thick the stem is. Okay, she's going down again, she's going down. Um, look at how thick that is. It's like as thick as an elbow stem, it's wild. And these leaves are like bigger than my palm. It is in a six inch pot with no drainage holes. Oh, that light. Living kind of its best life, but we're going to give her a massive trim today. And then the next one is over there. Another large, super, super heavy plant. So this, hello. We've got an Epipremnum pinnatum. Alvergata, I will be going back down again. Um, hopefully I can show you the whole thing. Whoa, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Those leaves, y'all, she's a monster. It's literally ginormous. It's like the size of my forearm. Huge. I remember when this plant was just a baby, he got like, his leaves were like this little. And this has just been growing in his living room and it's loving, it's loving life. Like, look at this leaf. Oh my gosh, so beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah, he just grew this in, in his living room. Um, not a ton of light where this one is. This is also growing in no drainage. Whoa. Growing in no drainage in a five inch, I think it's a five inch diameter pot, eight, eight inches deep in Lekka and Pawn. So if you're wondering if you can grow mature large specimens in no drainage for a long period of time, here's your answer. If this is not enough proof for you, I, I really, I, I have nothing left to give. Oh, okay. So I think we're gonna do the, let's do this one first, okay? Um, it is kind of getting dark now in here, so hopefully you guys can see, but um, the plan with this is to hack it down. He does not want one this tall because we have so much stem down here. I'm just hoping that I have enough roots to work with to sustain this top cutting. If not, I'm gonna have to reroot, which I really don't want to have to do. Oh my gosh, it's so thirsty. I had to let all of these dry out so that I could repot them. And um, I've been procrastinating, so she's really, really thirsty. Anyway, I'm hoping that I can hack away, not hack away, but I'm hoping I can chop up here just to like, give him enough that he looks like he has a full plant but kind of start to get rid of like all this stem and some of these smaller leaves down here so that's my goal with this one and kind of also the same goal that i have for the mandula i'm not going to try and keep the height on both of them because we just kind of want to start over with the top cuttings so yeah anyway that's that now we're going to move over hello no Okay. Well, we're gonna go over there, so see you in a bit. Okay, as you can see, it is very messy because obviously if you watched part one, you would have seen me make this mess. Same day for me, new day for you. Around here, we call that YouTube magic. I'm just kidding, we really don't. It's just 
called batch filming. <laughs> I actually don't think there's anything I do that is considered YouTube magic. Actually, I would say that it's pretty magical um, that I even managed to get as many subscribers as I did when I was headless. If you've been subscribed to me since I was headless, you guys are like the realest ones, for real. We're back. <laughs> the headless YouTuber and her trusty pug Punch. Mm. Because I like completely understand and I, I knew that going into it headless that like a lot of people weren't going to want to subscribe because you can't really make that connection with someone um, and their channel. Like there, I can tell you there's actually, there are a few kind of headless people that I, that I watch on YouTube. It's more like mukbang ASMR kinds of things where they, they just show like their lower half. But yeah, I, I'm not currently subscribed to anyone who does something like this that doesn't show their face. So thank you if you've been here since the beginning. I don't know why I did it on this cloth. Whoa ho ho. This thing is tall, you guys. I'll give you a better look at the leaves once it's removed from this pole because it's just really hard to work with it as it is. And it's very compacted in here. By the way, if, did I tell you guys what to substrate with? Leka and Pond. We're gonna maybe have to do the finger and pull method again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you haven't watched part one. Finger and pull, finger and pull. Finger and pull, no. Okay. No, oh. She's putting, she's fighting back. really don't want to break off the top of this plant. Those leaves are pristine and beautiful and Nick is going to be so sad if something happens to it. And I'll never forgive myself. Hey, you need to calm down over there. Hey, 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 hey. Stop. Finger and pull. I'm using my thumb. Oh. This is one reason that you do not want to wait until a plant in like a no drainage vessel or just any vessel that's not plastic where you can kind of like squeeze the sides. Like you don't want it to get too root bound or else it's so hard to get it out of there. Come on. Oh, that's a bamboo pole. Good thing I didn't stab myself. tired already and we just started. Oh, there we go. A lot of these roots are old and they might need to be chopped off. This is gonna be TMI, but since the last repot, all of my, like the skin from my nails you know, like the skin, it feels like all of my nails have like detached from my nail. Does that make sense? You know when you like pull it too far, which is why I have a band-aid on this one. Oh, I feel like I just did it with all my fingers on my right. Okay. Now we're gonna get into this area here. Oh my gosh, I think I actually did. Sherman, I don't wanna have to band-aid all my fingers. Ow. Okay, we're gonna see how much I can get through, or else I'm gonna, I, I really think I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna band-aid all my nails, ow. My thumbs seem to be the ones that hurt the most. I don't think there's any way I'd be able to repot if all of them had band-aids on it, so I'm just gonna have to deal with the pain. I can only hope that one day my epipremnum becomes this large because that's actually why I purchased the, the plant in the beginning and why I have even kept it in my house for so long is because my goal is to have leaves that look like this someday. Should I be so lucky? I'm just so scared that I'm gonna snap off one of these leaves. Okay. Now we've gotta dissect it, so I'm gonna bring you closer.
that was so difficult. <laughs> I can't even describe how much I hated that. But uh, we are finally untangled. The sucky part though is you can see that there are no roots on this top cutting. So I'm a little bit hesitant, to be honest, to chop off this root system down here. I am wondering, okay, I broke it. So now we don't have a choice. I thought that maybe I could wrap this around the pot, but it's just, it's too, um, it's too thick. So we're gonna have to rely on these roots here to get us established, but honestly, I think I'm gonna um, soak this in some water because it is super freaking thirsty. And I sort of wanna get some hydration into this thing. Okay, I think I'm gonna remove this and remove this guy. Oh no, he's bent. Okay, and then I'm gonna just chop I'm gonna chop at an angle. And I'm just gonna get this into some water and I'm gonna open up the mandula, I think. I feel like we're gonna have the same situation with this mandula with no roots being at the top. So I don't really see the point in getting the whole thing unpotted. I think I'm just gonna chop the top of this off and then just leave the bottom as it is and I don't know what he wants to do with it but I do see some roots up here so hopefully that is a good sign for us it looks like he already started the air layering process oh good I can see roots perfect so I think um where does this pull? And let's use this guy as the marker. I can see a ton of roots, so that's good. This pole is super damp. Whoa, timber. Ugh. No bamboo stick, that makes it a lot easier than I'm gonna chop. There we go. I'm not even gonna mess with that. I'm sorry, I don't have it in me. But here is the top cutting. Now I can show you these leaves up close. Like, oh, I never seriously thought I'd see a mandula with these large of leaves in my presence. I'm gonna help this guy out. Come on. Um, so I obviously want to get it off this pole because like I said, I don't I don't want to try and layer the new pole on top of this So we're just gonna untangle this and I'm gonna try and save as many of these roots as possible I'm gonna give the leaves a wipe down even though this table is filthy. At least I can get some of this dust off because I know that he probably hasn't wiped this plant down.
So I'm actually, I'm gonna remove these bottom leaves because that is gonna go in my vessel. I'm gonna have moss bits in my living room for ages after this. Oh my goodness. This leaf is just kind of ugly, so I'm gonna remove it too. Oh, I don't wanna break that. And this is why you'll see me sometimes just chop off the leaves and not the petioles, because I don't wanna snap the stem accidentally. Gonna remove dead sheath. Removing some of the dead sheath sometimes is like all you need to give like a really established plant just a little facelift. You want to kind of like refresh the look a little bit. Just remove all the brown. It really does help and just kind of brings more focus to all the green on the plant. You can't get over how thick this mandula stem is. It's crazy. Since we don't have an established root system, I'm gonna put it in here to get things going and it should be, should be fine. This thing is barely gonna fit in here, but it's actually like super snug. It's like the perfect shape. It's pretty satisfying. So, um, okay, 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 we're good, we're fine, okay. <laughs> Can you guys tell I'm overwhelmed? Okay, you're too big. Oh, Kate, sure, sure. My goodness. Hopefully they can fit in this tiny little vessel together. Okay, what we can do is chop more. Oh, I don't wanna chop any more stem off. Oh my, okay. Um, okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna sacrifice two nodes down here. Oh, oh, that definitely helped. Okay. I'm gonna redirect that into there. I'm gonna get all of these roots tucked in. And I also want, sorry, I can't see. I also want all of these no or these uh, aerial roots to be touching the pole like that. Okay. That is the best I can do at this point. Um, now I just need to fill. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stack another um, moss pole on top right away since this new leaf is coming out. Cause once this leaf comes out, um, actually it'll have a little bit of, of room. Like this node is only down here, but just so that he doesn't have to worry about it so soon, I'll probably just stick another pole on it so that it's already set up for him.
this is so okay this is a little it's a little much it truly is but i think <laughs> you know what we're gonna let that be nick's problem okay i'm not gonna fill the pole all the way but i will fill it enough so that it's not just like a clear plastic pole even though that's exactly what it is So this is the new top cutting, and I think that it's going to get established on here um, pretty quickly, honestly, in Nick's care, of course. Not mine. <laughs> Nick's care, and we've got a whole lot of pull to work with so that he doesn't have to worry about it. I actually don't mind the way that this looks, even if it was filled all the way. I think it's quite nice, definitely nicer than the black ones. Um, my hope is that these aerial roots kind of find its way into this pole fairly quickly because you guys saw that I basically started over. I chopped all of those bottom roots off. Yeah, gonna leave it like this. Gonna leave the bottom cutting it as, as it is because I don't actually know what that like the plan is. I don't know if he's gonna be keeping it or selling it, and I don't want to like do un unnecessary work essentially. So here's his new mandrula. I'm actually gonna like. Probably stick both of these in the shower and just like give them a rinse down and then get the moss nice and wet. So fun fact, the only time that I've ever needed stitches was when I was washing an IKEA um, wine glass and I was like scrubbing the rim and then the glass literally just like broke perfect perfectly in half and the the glass just like cut my finger open at one of my knuckles and I had to get stitches. That almost just happened again. In all of my years of planting in these glass vessels, I have never ever seen one made like this before. I don't know if you can tell, let me get closer. I don't know, it's not, oh, there we go, right there. Do you see the piece of glass? It's like it was made poorly and there's just a shard of glass, like, and it's so sharp. I'm sure Nick is not aware of that, so I'm just gonna, Tape it just in case I don't want me or him to encounter that again. I have never felt so disheveled <laughs> filming a video before. So essentially, um, I'm just shooting this shit now since I'm gonna start repotting and have nothing else to do. Where's my plant? So I filmed part one of this video. And then I went to a dentist appointment and I've mentioned it, I think I've mentioned it before, but my dentist doesn't have free parking like for their building. So I have to park kind of far, like all the way up a hill to get free parking. And I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to pay the price of parking. It's ridiculous. So I park up this hill everyone and their mothers and fathers parked on this hill today so i had to go all the freaking way to the very top and um going down the hill is not bad walking it's actually quite nice um i usually find some nice like flower bushes and stuff to take photos of but going back up is a freaking it's a journey it truly is um and it was so hot today it was almost 90 degrees fahrenheit in canada today it's kind of crazy like how much the weather has changed just in the time that you know i've lived here i remember like when i started dating vince like 10 years ago you know he was just like yeah you know summers don't get really any hotter than like 75 to like 80 here it's always just like pretty mild and you know he is born and raised here and like that's what he's used to but just with like global warming in the last decade it's crazy canada actually has like legit heat waves now like almost every year 
so many people have gone so long without um, buying an AC, but now everybody has to buy an AC. Or else you like roast in your in your condo or whatever your apartment, your house. So anyway, yeah, it was so hot today. <laughs> Almost 90 degrees and um, I had to walk all the way up this hill. Oh man, my loins were on fire. But on the bright side, I burned a bunch of calories, so that's good. Um, I don't know if I want to do two notches or three. I actually saw an ad for a company in, I think it, it's Australia. They're selling poles very, very similar to this, not exactly the same. <laughs> and they called it the lazy pole. It's just a matter of time, right? Okay. Sore. Can you get this done with the... Oh, no. I need two poles. No, I didn't want to. I really did not. I didn't want to do that. I really didn't. So, anyway, all that to say, you know, I've been living in Canada since 2017. And honestly, I think I might be a cold weather person now. Well, maybe not cold weather, but like... I definitely am not loving the hot weather like I used to. Not that I've ever really liked the heat in Sacramento, like during the summer, but you know, there's parts of the, the year where it is like really mild and like not super, super hot. Um, it's just the summers that are like terrible, but like this is pretty, would be considered pretty mild California weather in comparison to how hot it can get there. And like, I can't even hang anymore. I've gone weak. Yeah, I was miserable in the car. Everything was sweating. Burned my butt twice on the car seat. It's like I forgot how to live in hot weather. Okay, so I'm gonna put these two big aerial roots um, down into the substrate and Maybe this one goes down there too. I really want to push the pole up against the plant so that it can feel like it's being supported. All right, so here's where we are. I've basically tried to like put the stem as flush with the pole as possible so that we can start waking up some of these these aerial roots. Um, I am slightly worried about how thirsty this plant is. Look at like how thirsty these petioles are. Um, and it's because I like, I had to wait. I didn't want to work with wet soil, but now I'm a little bit worried about this plant suffering from a lack of water. So I am going to water it right away, I think. Now to put in the second pole. Okay, I'm gonna take this top one off because it's bending. 
want, supposed to be the easy part, with these freaking band-aids would get out of my life. I think I've just had too long of a day. Like today has just been too much for me. Okay, there we go. Jeez Louise, finally. All right, I think this is good. Oh my Lanta. All right. These poles are so sturdy, I love them. That was one of Nick's questions. He's like, um, is it gonna hold the plants? I'm like, trust me, these babies are solid, even without a bamboo stake. I think of all of the repots that I've done in part one and then in this video, I think I'm the most nervous about this one just because of how thirsty it is. Um, I'm gonna ask Nick if he's okay if I keep this for a while, um, just to keep an eye on it and monitor it. I just wanna make sure that it's getting the attention um, and sort of the watchful eye that it needs just to make sure it doesn't decline anymore because if this thing does get severely dehydrated i may just pluck it out of this pot and just stick it back into water um i'm hoping that's not the case i'm really really hoping that this thing kind of takes to this pole as quickly as possible but um i think it looks really good still like it's still like a really decent plant i really only just chopped off stem so that it looked a little bit more like a full plant but um, everybody say a prayer and keep your fingers and toes crossed for this plant because he worked very hard to get it this large and I'm just hoping that it takes. So that's gonna wrap it up um, for today's video. I was gonna try and squeeze in another um, plant, but I look like a corpse, I feel like a corpse. So I'm gonna go, but I hope you guys enjoyed this quick repot. I'm probably gonna time lapse and speed up and cut through a lot of it um, and just kind of like make it really, really short and sweet. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed part two. Uh, stick around for part three because we still have two, we have two more to do. So um, yeah, that'll go up in a few weeks, but please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it because it helps us a lot on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching another video and I'll see you in the next one.